Hello and welcome. I'm Machine Dana. I hope you're having a great, great, great day. I've done a series of videos and this is the fourth of four videos about how you can optimize your Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio or whatever, the whole picture when you are streaming. I focus on Streamlabs OBS because that's the software that I use, but most of the things that I've talked about are applicable to multiple different pieces of software. So this isn't just for people that are using Streamlabs OBS. The four video series that I've done, this is the fourth and this is going to focus specifically on game settings that you can change as a last resort to get things to run better for your stream. Remember, if you're entertaining people and you're the broadcaster, it's more important actually that the viewers get a good experience than it is that you get a good experience while gaming. Your experience while gaming is quite important. If you're enjoying it, if it's good for you, it's probably going to be quite entertaining for people as well. But there's definitely a trade-off there. If you've got max game settings, but you've got the choppiest frame ever, you might as well just switch off the stream and game on your own because nobody's going to watch you if you're choppy and it's in unstable or if it crashes and all of those things. So the people that will find this specific video useful are the people that have tried loads of different settings and perhaps still can't quite get their stream to stabilize free from frame drops and things like that. I would highly recommend viewing the first three videos first and that's quite important because things I'll show in this video are almost like it's kind of like last resorts really. You've probably got an idea already of the level of which your game impacts your PC, but you probably don't fully understand the way that your game can impact your stream, particularly if you've got low to middle end hardware. If you've got high end hardware, chances are it's not going to make a big difference. You can run on very high settings for both the game and also the stream. For me personally, I found the biggest gains and improvements I got to my stream when I was able to reduce the settings in the game just enough so that I still enjoyed the gameplay, but that the bump in performance was enough to stabilize my stream in a number of different ways. So check out the links in the description below to those three. Feel free to like the video if you find this useful and of course subscribe if you want to see more of my content if you want to jump onto my stream you're more than welcome to twitch.tv forward slash machine dana let's do this Okay, so I'm using Fortnite as the basis for the video. Everything that I mention will apply to any other games, really. I'm using Fortnite for a few different reasons. First of all, that's just a game that I play quite a lot. Yeah, all right, deal with it. Okay, a grown man playing Fortnite. It's a kid's game, I know. I don't judge you for the games that you play. Don't judge me for the games that I play. It's not the only game I play, okay? I play other games besides Fortnite, okay? I just like harvesting trees. But the thing about Fortnite, it's got a lot of different game settings that you can play around with, and therefore, it's a good example to use for other games. I'm just going to click into game settings. Now, bear in mind at this point, you more than likely already have your settings set at roughly the right level. If you've been gaming for a while, the chances are you'll know roughly what settings to use for your PC. But obviously every single game has like minimum settings and max settings, and you'll probably fall somewhere in between that. If you're not sure, you can always look on the Steam store at the game store page, and you can see the minimum settings and the maximum settings. If you're falling close to the minimum settings, or even below the minimum settings, you're already going to be at a major disadvantage. I would maybe consider dropping the game that you're playing. But assuming that the game that you're playing is handleable by your PC, what we've now also got to take into account is that you're going to be streaming as well and potentially going to have two or three other different programs open to make the stream run properly. And in particular, of course, Streamlabs OBS. And that's the core and basis of what this video is about, is optimizing the game to allow space and PC resources for the streaming software to increase the chances of your stream being a smooth, buttery smooth process for your viewers. So we're concerned with video and graphics settings here. First things first, being on full screen mode for the application, the game application that is, generally tends to get the best performance hit. So if you're in windowed mode or even full screen windowed mode, you may want to consider just going full screen application mode. And then I would recommend doing that in conjunction with the source with inside Streamlabs OBS being application capture rather than display capture. That can actually make quite a big difference. And also, I do mention this in the first video, but I mention it again now just because it's relevant right now. If you're running both a display capture and an application capture that are capturing two of the same thing, one over the other, turn the one that's behind off and leave the one in front on. And I would recommend leaving on the application capture and turning off the display capture if you're running a game. So app capture in conjunction with full screen mode can get you probably like a three or 4% performance improvement or maybe up to 10%. Resolution is quite important. The single biggest thing you'll 
will do that will impact the performance of your PC is the resolution. And that goes for both your stream settings, as I mentioned in the first video, but also specifically within the games that you're playing. Your graphics card is having to render more or less pixels depending on how high or low your resolution is. If you find that you're running a 4K, for example, and the stream is choppy and, and all the rest of it, you can simply try removing this down 19, 20, 10, 80, and see if that resolves the issues that you're having. Now, you may not have to do this in every single game. It may be just certain games that you have to reduce the resolution on. Me, personally, I find that actually Fortnite runs pretty well at 4K resolution. That's me personally for my hardware. However, for certain other games that are not as well optimized as Fortnite, my PC sometimes struggles with 4K and streaming and turning it down to 19, 20, 1080 doesn't really take away a lot from my gameplay, but it does improve a lot for my viewers and therefore it's worthwhile doing if you're experiencing that. And a lot of the times this is about just doing lots of different things that slowly almost like rule out issues to allow the stream to improve to a level that you're happy with and of course your viewers are happy with. Resolution is really, really important. Probably the single most important thing. Frame rate limit. Obviously, you're going to get a little bit of a saving if you're prepared to reduce the frame rates. If you're playing a low frame game like a strategy game or a turn-based game or like a card game or like chess or something, you don't need frames, okay? Those frames are not going to win your games. Just just turn the frames down on the game, okay? It's not going to make any difference to you, your performance. You, you're on an ego boost. Just turn them off, okay? However, obviously, if you're on a first-person shooter type of game or a game that re relies on reactions, particularly if you've got a, a low to middle end computer, you may want to consider reducing the FPS. For me personally, I've got 144 frame limit on my monitor, and therefore, I've set my frame limit to 144 here, which is an option within Fortnite. Not every single game allows you to change the frame limit, and those that do don't always give the full range of frame limits. I would recommend trying to match the frame limit to the frame limit of your hardware if your game doesn't have all of the frame limit options that you'd prefer to have more than likely your pc will in fact i'd be amazed if it doesn't so you just need to right click on the desktop to, to access those settings display settings scroll down to advanced display settings within windows and this will allow you to set the refresh rate for the monitor as you can see my primary monitor the 4k rog monitor is 144 Wait, what's why is he not giving me the extra Jeez, that's gonna lose me games that it's definitely gonna lose me games at point Zero, zero, 001 ever hurt. Gonna mess up my gameplay. Frames in terms of impact on your performance are the highest impact, but only in first person shooters, really. But they're one of the highest impacting things for GPU utilization. With the graphics quality, with most games, you can do like an auto set where you can go like low, medium, high, epic or whatever. If you can't be bothered customizing all the separate elements and you want the quick win here, but you're experiencing issues with your stream and lagging and stuff like that, simply try the presets and lowering the presets until it runs smoothly. If you run it on its lowest preset and you've still got issues, more than likely the issue is either your base hardware or something else, in which case I would recommend the other three videos linked in the description to diagnose what some of those things might be. If you're playing first person shooters, generally Generally, textures and effects can be lowered. Post-processing is very heavy on GPU utilization. So I always keep post-processing very, very low on the games that I'm playing if it's a first-person shooter. Shadows can have quite a big impact, but shadows can also be quite important to the gameplay as well. You have to judge that yourself. For me personally, I don't need the high quality shadows, but I need some shadows, particularly in a game like Fortnite where you can see the shadows and it can strategically matter. If it doesn't strategically matter, it's purely a personal preference at that point. If you can afford to forego the shadows then you can remove them or put them on the lowest preset but that actually might really significantly degrade the quality of the gameplay so with shadows i would normally tend to look at medium as a last resort you could put it on low and then we get to some advanced graphic settings as well if you can turn on v-sync i would recommend doing so or g-sync this is particularly important for frame rate games like first person shooters where you need to have the highest possible frame rate however if you're playing games that are less reactions based turn based games things like that and you don't mind a little bit of screen tearing sometimes unnoticeable i notice it personally when i turn this off but it can have a really big impact um if you turn this off on freeing up resources i'd recommend leaving it on if you've got a medium to high level hardware if you've got really low end hardware and you're trying to pinch that extra little bit of resource you could try turning v-sync or g-sync off and that might just give you a little bit of a kick motion blur is pretty irrelevant rendering mode pretty irrelevant as well just go on to the highest direct x that you that your pc can support multi-thread rendering is splits drawing work across multiple threads which can dramatically improve performance on multi-core processors this can cause hitches and lower fps on weaker hardware if you've got weaker hardware turn multi-thread rendering off wait i've not got weaker hardware my hardware's fine okay 
I'll link my hardware in the description. My hardware's fine. I've got it off because it's a first-person shooter, yo. I need the extra frames. <laughs> So there you have it, the last in the four-part video series on how to improve your streaming experience for your viewers, your broadcast, and ultimately for you as well as the broadcaster. Don't forget to check out the other three videos linked in the description. Feel free to like the video, feel free to subscribe, and of course, have a wonderful day. Take care.